Okay, good evening, councillors, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the first cabinet meeting of the year. So we'll go straight in with apologies for absence. I believe we were all present. Uh, minutes of the previous meeting, I, your wish I sign as a true record, I need a mover. Councillor Pritchard has moved, I have a seconder. Councillor Farrell has seconded. Uh, all those in favour? Okay, thank you. We'll get a signed copy of those. Uh, item three, declarations of interest. Does anybody have any prejudicial or pecuniary interest they need to declare? No, excellent. In that case, we'll move to agenda item four, uh, which is uh, questions from members of the public. I'm not aware of any questions being submitted. No, nope. okay. So we'll move straight into item five, which is matters referred to cabinet in accordance with overview and scrutiny procedurals. Uh, and we have a report from the chair of corporate scrutiny uh, Corporate Scrutiny Committee. Uh, Councillor Jay. Thank you very much. Um, so it's quite a simple report to update Cabinet and to make recommendations following consideration of the Asset Management Strategy and related documentation by the Corporate Scrutiny Committee meeting on the 8th of December 2022. Uh, we sought and received clarifications in respect of various aspects of the documentation um, and we approved the, man the asset management strategy and accompanied um, the documentation with eight recommendations which was set out in the report. I can of course read them all but I propose to just uh, take them as read and hand back over to you. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Are there any questions or comments from cabinet members? No. Nope. Uh, in that case, as there are eight recommendations, uh, what I was going to suggest was that we uh, take those away as cabinet uh, and report back on each one direct to your scrutiny committee uh, in, in in due time. Uh, is everybody happy with that as a direction of travel on those? Yeah. So Rob Pritchard seconded. All those in favour? Okay, that's carried. So thank you very much, and we'll get back to you on each of those individually as soon as we can. Thank you, Councillor Jay. So that brings us on to agenda item six of the agenda, which is the draft budget and medium term financial strategy uh, 2023 to 2023-24. Uh, uh, so this is a report of my own. Uh, just waiting for my computer to catch up. Uh, so this, um, this evening we will consider the draft budget, for want of a better phrase, uh, and the recommendation is that we approve the package of proposals in there uh, and we refer these to joint budget scrutiny, which will take place next Wednesday. Uh, so members of cabinet have been heavily involved in the uh, in the creation of this of this budget uh, and this uh, medium-term financial strategy. Uh, and if members look on the next page, on the uh, page 14 of the document, uh, the executive summary, the highlights are are explicit in there. Uh, a general fund. A uh, net cost of service of £9.6 million, a transfer from reserves of uh, £1.7 million, band D council tax uh, to increase by around 10 pence per week. Uh, HRA, uh, sorry, housing revenue account uh, will require around a million pounds from balances uh, to see out the period. Uh, and in terms of the general fund, uh, we're looking at uh, £10.8 million spend on capital and in the housing uh, account we're looking at 38 million pounds worth of spend. They are the highlights. Uh, the report goes into full details as to all the proposed policy changes or the other uh, potential changes and impact on our income and expenditure that we can predict over the next few years. Uh, obviously we can't see too far into the future and we're in a volatile market at the moment uh, but this is a uh, this is as accurate as we can get at this present stage. So does anybody have any questions or comments on the MTFS before we refer it to scrutiny? No. In that case, I'll move uh, the motion that Cabinet approve the draft package of budget proposals, including the proposed policy changes uh, included within the documents, uh, and that we refer this to joint budget scrutiny on the 25th of January. Uh, for those to consider the budget proposals in the report. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Pritchard seconds. All those in favour? That is unanimous. That is carried. Thank you very much. 
We will now move on to agenda item seven, which is the review of temporary reserves, retained funds and provisions. And this is Councillor Bailey's report. Thank you. So the purpose of the report is to advise members on the levels of reserves and to seek approval to repurpose unspent reserves following the recent review by the Executive Director of Finance. The main issues to note are, as detailed in the report, reserves are reviewed robustly um, in detail in March and in October for consideration by Cabinet to inform the budget process. The report details reserves which are no longer required and will be returned to balances and identifies 50k to be repurposed to create a new reserve fund for the creation of defences to assist in deterring illegal encampments. Any balances returned to help to reduce the current predicted deficit on the MTFS. So the recommendations to approve as detailed in the report and I'm happy to move them. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bailey. Are there any questions or comments from Cabinet members? No, uh, I'd just like to say I'm quite pleased with the, uh, uh, with the creation of the new reserve uh, to fund events against uh, illegal encampments. We've been blighted by those over the last couple of years, so uh, having this additional money available uh, to, to do something reactively, I think, uh, I think is a, a positive move uh, and well done to all those involved in, in organising that. Uh, if there are no further questions or comments, uh, it, Councillor Bailey has moved those. Do I have a seconder? Councillor, I can't see. You're all, you're all leaning forward. Councillor Clements has seconded those. All those in favour? Okay, that is carried as well. Thank you very much. And that brings us on to agenda item eight, which is the business rates income forecast. Again, Councillor Bailey. Thank you. The report sets out the forecast business rates to be received in 2022-23 and 23-24 as included within the NNDR1. Return to DLHUHC, which will also inform the councils and its preceptors budget projections for 23-24. There is always an element of uncertainty with business rates forecasting due to the demand-led nature of the appeals process, especially following the National Business Rates Revaluation Exercise which means that while we're asking Cabinet to approve the forecast, it is subject <coughs> to any changes arising before the 31st of January by any developments before then. Should material amendments be required to the forecast NNDR1, Cabinet are recommended to authorise the Executive Director of Finance in consultation with the Leader of the Council to make such required amendments as necessary. The estimated net yield of 13581271 retained by the Council is held within the collection fund. This is reduced by the tariff payable of 10,686,850 in 2023 and 2024 and the 50% levy on business rates in excess of the government assessed baseline. A net increase in funding of 634,539 is reported when compared to the draft MTFS forecast. Increased S31 grant income of £2,483,923 is reported, offset by the associated reduced collectible business rates income of £1,215,929 and an increased levy payment of £633,997. In addition, a deficit of 260300 is forecast for 2023, sorry, 2022-23 which is 539 lower than the MTFS forecast. And I'm happy to move, thank you. Thank you, <clears throat> thank you Councillor Bailey. Does anybody have any questions or comments on this report? No, uh, so you've moved those. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Pritchard has seconded. All those in favour? Again, unanimous, so that is carried. Thank you very much. And that brings me on to uh, agenda item nine which is the exclusion of press and public so in accordance with the provisions of the local authorities executive arrangements meetings access to information england regulation 2012 and section 100a4 of the local government at 1972 the press and public be excluded from the meeting during the consideration of the following business on the grounds that this involves the likely disclosure of exempt information as defined in paragraph 3 of part 1 of the schedule 12a of the act and the public interest in withholding the information outweighs the public interest in disclosing the information to the public i so move councillor pritchard seconds all those in favor that is carried so 
Thank you very much. If any members of the public could leave and if we could turn the webcast off.